Welcome to learning at igcseaccounts.com. If we can guide you towards our website at www.igcseaccounts.com, you will find the notes that go along with this video tutorial. The easiest way to download it is to right click on the notes click here button and save it as a PDF to your desktop. You should find this much quicker than waiting for it to load up on your web browser. My name is Dean Elhoss and today we are looking at the accounting concept of prudence. The concept states that profits must not be overstated and the value of the assets must not be overvalued. It's the accountant's duty to ensure that all accounts are reliable. In other words, they are free from any bias and any errors. The accounting concept of prudence ensures that the assets or liabilities of the firm are represented as they should be in the balance sheet. So for example, if we had a delivery van that we paid $10,000 for at the beginning of the financial year, at the end of the year we estimate that it will have depreciated or lost $1,000 worth of value then according to the accounting rule of prudence we should show the value of the asset in the balance sheet as $9,000. In other words we don't overvalue the asset and pretend it's worth $10,000 just because that was the amount that we paid for it as a result of using this asset in the business to deliver the goods to our customers it has lost a thousand dollars in value. Similarly if you have a creditor that you owe five thousand dollars to and you're waiting to see whether that creditor will give you a promotional discount if you're hoping that the creditor will give you a thousand dollars as a discount well you can't show in the balance sheet the amount owing as $4,000. The reason? The accounting rule of prudence which says you should never undervalue liabilities. So we would show the creditor value in the balance sheet as $5,000 not the $4,000. We can only put $4,000 into the balance sheet as the value of the creditor once we've received the bill or the invoice from the creditor which states that we owe him or her $4,000. The accounting rule of prudence also suggests that you should never overstate your profits or understate your losses. The reason for that is the accountant needs to produce a reliable set of reports that are free from error and also free from bias. So if we took an example of a company that has calculated that it's made a net profit of $10,000, if it ignored a $1,000 unpaid electricity bill, it would be overstating the value of its profits. In other words, it would be pretending, if you like, that its profits were $1,000 more than they actually were. So the correct treatment is to minus the $1,000 to give you the correct net profit of $9,000 which is not overstated or overemphasized. The same rule of prudence applies to a loss. So if we said the same company made a net loss of $10,000 this loss would be understated if they ignored the electricity bill of $1,000. So the correct treatment, again, is to minus that $1,000 from the net loss of $10,000 to give you the correct $11,000 loss figure. It's, worth also, it's also worth pointing out that when we're discussing assets and liabilities, we always talk about value. So we say that we overvalue an asset or we undervalue a liability. When we're talking about profits and losses, we use the term overstate 
to mean too much or understate to mean too little. Thanks for listening. If you found this tutorial useful then please do wait around for the next tutorial to load up on the playlist. Remember you can play games, download notes and past papers at www.igcseaccounts.com. We'd also like to point you towards our sister website, A-Level Accounts, if you are an AS or A-Level student, and you can find that at www.alevelaccounts.weebly.com. There you can find past papers, answers and handouts, which hopefully should prove useful.